Hi, my name's Peter Broxholm and uh, we're out here at Perini Motorcycle Park. We're testing a, a world first. We've got the uh, YZR500 EFI Electronic Fuel Injection 2-stroke 500. It's been uh, shoehorned into a uh, YZF 450 frame and um, the uh, normal 2-stroke carburetor is, is gone. It's disappeared and so it's been replaced by electronic fuel injection. This is something that's never happened before. The way that it began is that um, uh, Keith Patterson, he rides his bikes a lot and he ended up blowing the engine on his Yamaha. And so he wanted to um, put a 500 into his 450 frame but with a bit of a twist, he wanted to go fuel injection. So this is something that doesn't happen. All right, it just fuel injection on a two-stroke. It's never been accomplished in the world that I understand of um, in a way that it really works. A fully functioning uh, electronic fuel injection two-stroke 500. Keith got hooked up with a guy named Big Red and his uh, fuel injection gurus. They got stuck in. Now, the amount of hours that they've spent has just been astronomical and uh, it would kind of make you cry if you saw how much effort and time and sweat's gone into this bike. But they've come out on top and despite what some people might say about, you know, well, why would you go to such an effort? They've got a bike now that's not just a competitive bike or anything like that. This is something that's it's brand new, it's never been done before. It's a two-stroke, which is you know, the easy to maintain, I guess, side of things, cheap to produce motorcycle. And this thing's got a lot of boggy, but most of all, it's really easy to handle. We, we got to come out here at Perini and, and test it out. The coolest thing about this bike is that it's got this 500 engine in it, but it still feels just like a light 250 or something like that. It weighs in about 105 kg wet, which is light for the high horsepower open bikes. And you notice that you're in the corners and it, you can flick it. Those little quick movements are really easy to do. Another thing I notice is when you're in the air, uh, if you turn the throttle just a little bit, you know, it'll really flick the back wheel down, lift the front wheel up quickly. And then any sideways movement you do, it does feel like a, a light bike, nice and easy to ride. The engine on this is actually a standard CR500 engine. They haven't ported or done anything special to the engine. When they come out standard, those bikes, they have a bit of a hit and they're a little bit hard to ride. So with the electronic fuel injection, it's actually um, smoothing out that hit a lot. So what you got is when you're powering up through the revs, there's nothing sudden, there's nothing too unexpected about it. Of course, if you want to go full throttle, then things are going to happen real fast. I never had quite had the, had the front wheel lift right up and launch me to the moon, but you know, it felt like it's ready to do that. biggest thing that I noticed with the horsepower is that as you're powering out of a turn it's just like any bike. The bike's going to have lots of wheel spin and that sort of limits how much acceleration you're going to get. But when you get it back into the traction it's incredible how much it really starts pulling. It just wants to keep going where other bikes they sort of slowly peter off as they get higher in speed. This thing doesn't seem to have that problem. You know you could be in fourth gear and you're still trying to keep the front wheel down like you would on, on in second on a normal bike. When we did a few starts with the other boys on the 450s, yeah, we were pretty even off the gate and for the first sort of half of the straight. But as soon as we got onto the traction and when Keith was riding it, he was just, he just tracked it away from me like really fast. So that's what I noticed on the motocross track. Once you find a decent straight, you just change it up a gear and you just go. I loved it just, it, it just kind of brings a grin to your face instantly just whenever you see a straight. <laughs> There's still plenty of kinks in there, down low in the revs, it doesn't run exactly smooth yet. In saying that though, we made some adjustments even out here at the track with Big Red and we just kept leaning things off and it just got better and better, especially once it gets hot. Once this bike was hot and we had it nice and lean, I didn't actually find any bogging or anything, the power was smooth the whole way through. As Big Red and, and Keith and any test riders that continue with testing, there's going to be improvements, you can guarantee it, and it's just going to make it smoother and better as they go. So we're definitely going to be back with this bike. 
the dream is to maybe be able to direct inject it. I don't know, electric start, maybe put it into a, a Honda 450 frame just for that extra lightness. I know that Big Red is really keen to eventually build a David Bailey replica. I don't know if you've heard about that bike, but 85 horsepower, that's a number that's probably going to catch your attention. At the moment, this one, I think, is about 70 horsepower standard. Um, it's hard to test. They can't actually test it on the dyno because it shakes the dyno to, to, to bits as soon as they get above three and a half grand. So you can imagine the potential that a concept like this has and the fact that they've overcome all the opposition and they've got a bike that works and electronic fuel injection. That's something that's going to get attention all over the world. You can guarantee that. So yeah, at, at the moment, she's pretty top secret and we're going to keep it that way with some of the more nitty gritty things. But as to actual how it works, then that's right here for your viewing pleasure and we're going to give you lots more as, as, we, uh, as we get more.